Thank you for tuning in to the fifth installment in my video series covering the Jonesport Beals Bridge construction project. Coming up, I'll be posting an update on the Beals side retaining walls, as well as more detailed information about the rebar work you see here. Sergeant Materials was on site today providing the grout and the Class A concrete. 12 trucks made a total of 17 trips to Jonesport Beals. The first truck brought one load of grout, which is pumped through to lubricate prior to the concrete being pumped. Following the grout, a series of 16 more trucks carried 10 yards of Class A concrete, which you'll see here being poured into the first span on the Jonesport side of the bridge. Today's pour will go from the bridge abutment to the first pier, which are the column structures that support the bridge. 155 yards will be poured into the first span, with 20 to 25 yards going into the diaphragm. The diaphragm is the portion of the pour that goes down around the bridge beams before it rises to form the deck. One yard of concrete weighs 4,050 pounds. With 155 yards in the first span, this section of the bridge alone now weighs over 627,000 pounds. A concrete vibrator is used to eliminate voids in the concrete and allow air to escape. This process was also seen in the third update when concrete was poured as part of the Jonesport approach. Throughout the entire pouring process, the concrete is tested repeatedly. Water is added during the testing process so it can't be used and you see it being discarded here. The concrete bucket you see leaving here is used when pouring concrete with a crane, but today it was used to catch the grout as it lubricated the equipment prior to pouring. With the diaphragm now filling, the concrete begins to rise and start to form the bridge deck. CPM can now begin working with the concrete above the rebar as you see the crew on the right raking and the crew on the left finishing. Approximately six feet from the bridge abutment, the concrete paper will begin to be used. This piece of equipment is made up of three parts, the auger, the finish roller, and finally the drag pan. Headquartered out of Bangor, Maine, SW Cole performed all the third-party concrete testing that took place throughout the day. For optimum strength, the goal for the concrete is to test at 7.5% air. There is a 1.5% variance allowed to either side as long as the concrete tests between 6 and 9% it is safe to be used. Here you see one of approximately 30 tests that were performed throughout the day. Testing perfectly, the concrete pour continues uninterrupted and the excess is discarded as you saw earlier in this video. To perform the concrete testing, each person must be certified with the American Concrete Institute. A retarder is sprayed on the concrete to keep it from drying out until the workers can complete the finishing process. In the beginning of the day, blankets were brought up in preparation of the last step. Three layers of blanketing will be placed to help hold the heat as the concrete cures. The first layer is burlap, followed by the heavier blanket layer, and finally poly. In the warmer months, only the burlap and poly layers are required, but this time of year the additional blanket layer is also added. The posts that held the rails the concrete paver rode on can now be removed as you see here. Following the removal, concrete is then added to fill the holes left behind. 
The bridge is designed by VHB Engineering out of their Augusta, Maine location. I'd like to give a special thank you to Dan Vino and CPM for their ongoing support of this bridge series. CPM is located in Freeport, Maine, and contact information will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my fifth update on the Jonesport Beals new bridge construction. I have two additional videos coming out that will show the bridge beams being set as well as the rebar process and retaining wall installation. Please subscribe to my channel to be sure you do not miss any updates.